This is probably not the disguise I would go with. <laughs> Doesn't exactly keep me under the radar. <laughs> no, but it's true, man. Of course, everybody's real nice to me once the plane safely lands. Right, then they're just looking over, smiling, like... <laughs> I'm just waiting for a real honest passenger at the end of the flight, you know, just come up, excuse me, sir. <laughs> I thought you were gonna kill us. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Remember when you got up to go to the bathroom? I was gonna stab you! <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> oh man, it's true though. That's what it feels like these days. It's a big, important year for us, all right? Let's be honest, let's have some seriousness. Big important vote coming up. Yeah. Personally, yeah, that's right. Personally, I think everybody should exercise their rights to vote in a democracy. And I'm talking about American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, I, 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 let's, get, let's get the energy back. It is a big important vote coming up. We gotta get this one right. How many people are excited about voting in John Kerry? Make some noise. That's interesting. <laughs> Let me ask that question another way. How many people in this room are excited about voting out George W. Bush? Make some noise. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought. <laughs> Nobody really cares about John Kerry. Let's, let's be honest. They could be running a pink baboon against Bush. <laughs> Probably win, man. But it's a big election year, man. We got to get this one right. Two key issues in the election, right? Economy and foreign policy. Regarding the economy, everybody's up in arms because supposedly all the good jobs are being exported to India. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm from India. <laughs> I took that personally. So I thought about it. I decided to do the right thing, the patriotic thing. I decided to volunteer myself to begin importing crappy jobs from India. <laughs> Rickshaw drivers, <laughs> snake charmers, Maybe even a few computer programmers. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Foreign policy, Iraq war, terrorism, everybody's scared. Everybody's watching the war. I don't know if you guys know this, right after 9-11, people started talking about how Muslims around the world supposedly hate America. I was like, what? I'm an American Muslim. I'm gonna find out why I got internet access. I went on Google.com. I did some research. I think I figured it out. I bet Muslims around the world would stop hating America if Americans just stop killing them. I don't know for sure. It's just a theory. But somebody's going to tell the White House. Haven't figured it out yet. I mean, think about it. This has got to be a very awkward conversation. If you're the leader of some Arab nation, you know, you're like, uh, yes, hello, Mr. Bush. Ahlan wa sahlan. Kayf al hal, yo, Georgie. Listen, I want to talk to you. Bas yaani, I want to tell you. We love America. We love everything about you. We love to watch your Hollywood movie. Number one show in Middle East is Baywatch. <laughs> no, really, it is. <laughs> we love to drink your Coca-Cola and your Pepsi and eat your McDonald's Big Mac. <laughs> we love to drive your big SUV, especially the Hammer. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we have one little problem. <laughs> Stop killing us! <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Mr. Bush? Ya <Yeah>, Georgie? <laughs> he hung up. Let's burn some flags! <laughs> That's all they ever do, man. Burn a flag, have a riot. Which I don't even understand, because Muslim countries just gotta turn around and remanufacture them anyway. <laughs> Chinese Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
ridiculous, man. Man, it makes me sad. We're not a very politically active community. We're not a politically organized community. That makes me sad. Because this is in spite of the fact that we have conference after conference after conference about what? Muslim participation in the political process. <laughs> Always that one guy at the conference, real passionate. We need more Muslim politicians. We need more Muslims than the media. Are bhai, we need more Muslim policy makers. What about you, uncle? You have three sons. What do they do? Mashallah, they're all doctors. <laughs> I am so proud of them, even though one of them had to go to the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, man. But truthfully, we, we're not a politically organized community. Nobody seems to care about politics in the Muslim community. That really does make me sad. Because I feel that we as Muslims living in the West should be excited to exercise our rights to vote in a democracy. Because I don't know if you guys know this, there's still a lot of Muslim countries that have kings. <laughs> what is this, the 15th century? <laughs> Actually, it is according to the Islamic calendar. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. But, but, but nevertheless, can you imagine living in a country where they choose the leader based on who his daddy was? <laughs> Ridiculous! <laughs> Some backwards people right there, man. <laughs> I mean, I can just imagine before the Iraq war, if Saddam just gave in, you know, listen, listen, I don't want a war. I don't want a war. I am willing to convert Iraq into democracy. And my son Uday will be running for president. And somehow they'd screw it up and Uday would lose the popular vote. <laughs> and then Saddam would come out like, Uday did not lose. Uday did not lose. We have to have a recount. Only in one province in Basra. And the whole world community like, why should we trust your stupid recount? You have to trust it. Because the governor of Basra is my other son, Kuse. We have to deal with all these things these days, man. The community is growing. It's a big community. Part of the reason is because people keep converting to Islam. Give it up for the converts, ladies and gentlemen. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. You know, we, we, all these Muslims have these little convert projects going on. You know, they got that good friend who they're hoping. He, <laughs> he's got MP, Muslim potential. <laughs> I have a friend like that. I was talking to him about religion one day. He's like, hey, listen, dude. I'm totally not interested in organized religion. So I said, great, become a Muslim. We're the most disorganized people on earth. <laughs> You'll be right at home, brother. <laughs> Nobody's tough, man. When you convert to Islam, that's got to be tough, man. You know, you think about it, right? Your whole life changes. Everything about it. I heard of a brother a couple months in. He was like, man, you sure this thing is called Islam? Can't drink. Can't be with girls. I can't even eat a ham sandwich. Should be called, it's hard, bro. <laughs> hey, thank you guys very much. My name is Azhar Osman. You guys are a great crowd. Enjoy the rest of the show. Salam alaikum. I mean, y'all stand at me like, who's the Negro? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Let me begin properly. Assalamu alaikum. You know, this is weak. What's up with the weak salams? Assalamu alaikum. I can't stand weak Muslims. Some of us are still suffering from 9 11 itis. You got to let it go, people. Let it go. 9 11 was three years ago. You got Muslims still worried about it. For real. You can't change it. And if you think about it, man, 9 11 was three years ago. You couldn't even tell a Muslim a knock knock joke. <laughs> you ever try? You'd be like, hey, brother, knock knock. Don't answer it! <laughs> you gotta defend the dean. I'm sorry. You can't be punks about it. You gotta be strong about it. You know, when it's wrong, let people know it's wrong. Don't be all polite. I'm a Muslim that's not politically correct. 
I'll let you know when there's a problem. I'm going to be honest. Does this bother you? Or maybe this bothers me. Does it bother you that all the experts these days on Islam are not Muslim? You see me at the airport? You're coming through, guy's like, I got to search your bag. I'm like, knock yourself out. He opened the bag up. He's like, what's that green book now? In my defense, I had my Quran in the bag. But I didn't have the travel Quran. I had the big green one. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you read a couple of ayats, list a little ways. You know what I'm talking about, right? Dude was like, what is that? I was like, it's my Quran. He was like, you mind if I take a look? I said, knock yourself out. He opened the book up. He said, oh my God, what's that written in? I said, Braille. <laughs> Even though he went to touch it, he was like, 